Hey guys, I want to walk you through the process of developing that simulation for the transistor circuit we're going to be using this week in the lab. Um, let me go ahead and make a new simulation, new schematic, and I'll show you the screen so you can follow along here. First thing I'm going to do is grab the NPN transistor. So the, what you do is get a generic NPN. I'll just grab the first one that comes up. But then once you've placed it, you can uh, click it, get a, and pick a particular transistor that you're going to use for that guy. In this case, we're using a 39, a 2N 3904. Okay, so there's the transistor. Um, I need some power supplies, so let's go ahead and get a couple of those guys. One represents the output of the PWM circuit, the other represents the regulated voltage output from the Artemis Nano. Then I'm going to need a couple of resistors. So we'll put one here on the collector, and I'll put one here on the base. And then uh, let's go ahead and wire these guys up. Uh, LT Spice lets you run right through the middle of components. It knows that that's not what you meant, and it w and it wires things up correctly. So that saves you some time wiring. And then I need this guy to come down here. And then finally, I need a ground connection. So I'm going to just label this bottom net down here ground. OK, these resistors. So this guy needs to be pretty big. I'm going to put in 50K. You don't have a 50K in your kit. Um, so you, you need to be less than this, but it needs to be pretty healthy. Because remember, this voltage is going to be up to 2 volts. This voltage is going to be less than a volt. So it'll be over a volt drop across here, and we don't want this to go above about a tenth of a milliamp. So make sure you have enough resistance here to prevent the current from going much above a tenth of a milliamp. This one, on the other hand, could be considerably smaller. I'm going to put 5K. It could be smaller than that. Um, the drop here can go up to 3.3 volts, and with 5K, that's going to be less than a milliamp. But this current can go up to multiple milliamps, 3 or 5 or something like that. I don't want it to be 20, though, so don't dial this resistance down too low, but it could certainly be less than 5K and still be OK. But that's basically the circuit. This is uh, close to what you need, um, but not exactly the same. You sh you'll want to change these resistors to the ones you actually use in the lab so that you can simulate the actual lab you're going to do. Let's go ahead and add a spice directive to run the uh, the sweep. So we want to do a DC sweep of V1. We're going to go from 0 to 1.5 volts, say, in steps of 0.01 volts. So we're going to do a hundredth of a volt a step. When this transistor turns on, it turns on fast. So we need pretty good resolution to actually witness that. Um, we'll find that this range of voltages is way too large. We can dial that down, but you can't dial it down until you know where the range that's interesting is. So let's go figure that out. Um, first of all, let's uh, okay. Let's probe here on the output of the voltage supply. That looks good. It's going 0 to 1.5 volts. Um, let's look at Let's look at the base of the transistor. Notice if I go too far, it turns into a current meter. I want a voltmeter. So you'll see that the voltage on the base goes up until the diode starts drawing current, at which point the voltage across the diode caps at the diode drop. Now, this is not an LED. This is a signal diode. So its cap voltage is around 6 tenths of a volt. In this case, maybe even a little bit less. So it, it's, not, it's not like an LED, which has its a threshold voltage of 1.4, 1.5, sometimes 1.6 or more volts. Um, this guy is much, much lower, so that's okay. Uh, let's see what's going on at that collector. Uh, nothing. Oh, and the reason is I never set the voltage of that power supply. So let's uh, let's turn off the graph and let's set this to 3.3 volts like it's supposed to be. Okay, try that again. All right. So uh, first, the uh, voltage of the output, voltage of the base. Now let's see what that collector's doing. Okay, still. Oh, 
3.3, that's not the collector, this is the collector. There we go. Collector's on this side of the 5K. I measured on that side, I got 3.3 volts all the way across. That's the collector. So you can see the range of voltages that's interesting. The diode doesn't even turn on until you get past 0.5 volts, and by the time you get to one volt, you're done. In this particular example, with these resistors, that's the behavior you see. If you change those resistors, it's gonna shift a little bit the behavior of the circuit. But you can see the part we're interested in is this part right here. So we want to uh, really focus on that piece of it. Um, we can go ahead and extract that data, data export tool. I'm just going to grab what I've already got there. You'll notice that node 2 is the collector and node 4 is the diode. Okay. Okay, I went ahead and created it's an empty notebook here on DeepNote. Um, I'm going to grab my data now. That's in, I saved from LT Spice. And drag it in here. I'll put it in that folder with my notebook. Draft10.txt. You notice I've got node 2, node 4, node 3, and node 1. And you'll remember that from, uh, from LT Spice, it was node 2 and node 4. Node 4 was the diode voltage. Node 3 is the drive voltage and node 4. So I really don't want node 1. Node 1 is just the voltage on the 3.3 uh, volt supply. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and fill this guy in. I'll get uh, import numpy as np, import um, Let's see, pandas as pd, import matplotlib as uh, pyplot as plt. Okay. Let's load the data. Um, pd.read um, csv. But it wants to be draft. 10.txt, but this is tab delimited, so I'm going to put delimiter delimiter equals tab, and let's see what we got. Okay, it looks like that worked. Um, and what I want to do is, uh, let's see, I want v v1 equals pd.v1, do that, we'll say df.v1, why it doesn't like that, okay, there we go, um, we're going to say v top, the top end of the sense resistor, that's, uh, let me remind myself, that's uh, node 3, so that's going to be v open paren, Let's do it, df, v, open paren, n, 0, 0, 3, close paren. Then v bottom, that's the voltage of the diode. That's going to be df, what is that guy? That's node 4. So uh, v, n, 0, 0, 4, close paren. And then voltage of the collector, df, the collector voltage is this guy, that's node 2, V node 0, zero 2, and I might as well actually Vs is the source voltage of the, on the other side of that collector resistor, that's, um, I guess that's node 1, node 1, does it look like node 1 is all 3.3 volts? It is, okay, so that's it, V, I could just put 3.3 volts, that works the same, node 1. Okay, so uh, then we're going to have our base. The base resistor was 50K, so that's 50E3. And the collector resistor RC, that was 5K, 5E3. Okay, so we want to look at, <coughs> let's, um, oh, and I should get, uh, let's do this, plt.plot. Let's just look at, uh, v1 in the horizontal direction, and then we'll look at v top, v1, v bottom, v1, v c. And you can see those are those 
same curves. We just got just checking to make sure they came in okay to matplotlib. So plt.grid, uh, plt.title, we'll just call this a voltage check. Right, that makes sense. And then uh, plt.x label, that's going to be um, V1 drive. It's measured in volts. plt.y label, that's going to be uh, test points. And that's also measured in volts. Okay. So, uh, and really, maybe what we should do is. Um, <coughs> label V drive base collector. Okay, I spelled something wrong. Left out a close parenthesis. Okay, so that's a nice graph to have in your report. It shows you the driving voltage. It shows you the voltage across the diode, the base voltage on that transistor, and then there's the collector voltage. So, um, and you can see that the interesting part that we care about is the voltage between about 0.6 volts and about 0.75 or something like that. Let's see here. Okay, so we could um, we could set that up uh, do it this way. So then we could say uh, DF how about this? Interesting is um, df dot v1 greater than 0 0.5 and df dot v1 less than 0 0.75 okay and then we could just say interesting we could just index on what's interesting which is just that and then we could add that to all these guys and then this would zoom in on just the part of the graph that's interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the idea. Now, you can really tell that these guys, maybe we should go to point, point 0.55 instead of point 0.5. The nice thing about this is, of course, now can I can change it up here. It automatically changes the, the graph down here. And all these variables are now defined only over that interesting range. <clears throat> so we can calculate the collector current, for example. What is that going to be? That's the V source over minus VC over RC. And the base current, of course, is going to be uh, V top minus V bottom divided by RB, like that. Okay, so then you could, in principle, make a plot of uh, the base current versus an in the base current horizontally, the collector current vertically. And then let's look at that in terms of blue dots just to see what that looks like. That is gorgeous, okay? It's not shocking, really, that the model gives us something beautiful like that because it's a theoretical model. What's interesting is when you get in the lab and you look at the data from the lab and you see, does it really look like that? So, <coughs> so that's what you want to check. All right, well, I'm going to have to go... Um, but hopefully that gives you guys some ideas about how, not only how you can analyze the data, but also how you can set it up, set up the simulation in, um, in LTSpice.